Somebody being blessed. Amen. Oh, we are just starting. Let's fire on the mountain. Amen. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord seated upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. of who Uzziah was. Uzziah was the uncle of Isaiah. Huh? But the year he died, I saw the Lord. Can I tell you something? Jesus began to speak. He said, a man's enemy is in his own household. Are you understanding now? So the moment he died, his eyes was open to see God. That makes me to understand in order for you to see the glory of God this weekend, somebody must die. Uh -huh. now, now you are responding to me. I said a scripture since the day of John the Baptist. The kingdom of God's forever. I'm using scripture. I'm not making this up. That's why it's there. saw the Lord. Lift up your hand. Say, every Uzziah in my life, in my ministry, over my calling, let them die tonight. Let them die tonight. Let them die tonight. Open your mouth and pray. Come on, open your mouth. I want to hear you. Let this room like thunder. Every Uzziah in the life of your children, in the life of your husband, in the life of your ministry, over your calling, they die tonight. They die tonight. Isaiah must die. Isaiah must die. Isaiah must die. Isaiah must die. The spirit of Isaiah has not died in my ministry. Die in my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You see, let me say this. Uzziah's come to block your revelation. My God. He said, as he died, I saw the Lord. Mm. So that means, from Isaiah 1 all the way to 5, he was not seeing God. Yes. Oh, you're not understanding me. Mm. Every believer is entitled to a revelation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You must hear God for yourself. Amen. 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 But there's some powers who are bound to their grandfather the devil. Yes. To their father the devil. To their uncle the devil. Mm. To their mother the devil. I will not let this one see God in their life. Yes. Oh, it's very soon. Especially some of us who came from Africa. Mm. And so even, even the African Americans. Yes. I've been to churches and I say, you, you are dealing with not only generational curses, ancestral curses. And you are looking cute. <laughs> if I was not ministry man of God, I would sit on the ground and begin to pray. Because I know what is following me. Yes. <laughs> you don't understand. Now, he died. I saw the Lord. This weekend, you must see God. Amen. This weekend, you must see God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So open the eyes. Yes. 
manifestation in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Was too much on fire, I had to run off the stage. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, you know, um, we are so happy to be in the presence of God with this great servant of God. And um, I'm telling you, tonight, <laughs> I always say this word, it's going to be brutal. <laughs> Maybe it's going to be heavy. There's a... That, <laughs> The angels of God are so strong around this man of God. Amen. 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 Now, one thing I will say, don't look at the size of the man. Look at the content in the man. Amen. See, many of you will miss your breakthrough this weekend because you will see two young men standing here. The other one has glasses with some funny shoes on and jackets. Uh, you know, what does he have to give? You don't do that. Amen? Amen. But you have to make sure you open up your spirit Amen. by faith. Amen. So that whatever it is the man of God will deposit tonight will benefit your life. Amen. 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 Prophet. He's my brother. I have many brothers. But he's one of the people that I call when I'm going through the times of the prophet. No, prophets are very depressed people. Let me be honest with you. We go through mood swings, you know. And I call them PMS. Prophetic mood swings. You know, one day we want to talk to you. The other day we don't want to talk to you. The one we want to see you and we don't want to see you. I will call him prophet. I'm going through one of those times and he'll tell me this. Sometimes we find me to books and very resourceful. And I know tonight he has a load of of resources to give us. Amen. So with no further ado, I want you guys to prepare your heart as we invite a great servant of the Lord, no other than Prophet Ugo. Clap for the servant of God. Clap, 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 everyone. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. I'm going to take this song before we begin. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all
mention of the name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord we declare that this gathering uh, is covered by Jesus and Jesus alone uh, in the name of Jesus Lord God Almighty you said wheresoever two or three are gathered you are there in the midst the word of the Lord said let God arise and his enemies be scattered I pray this day that you would arise in our midst uh, in the name of Jesus Amen. let there be diverse manifestations of your glory Amen. let there be supernatural impartations Amen. let the spiritually blind see uh, let the deaf begin to hear Amen. Let those who have been captive be released in the name of Jesus. Amen. Freedom. For he who the Son has set free shall be free indeed. Amen. We declare freedom to the captives this evening. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy Spirit, I give you the platform. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may receive it. I welcome each and every one of you to this service this day. Before we begin, the Bible says, Give honor to whom honor is due. Just wanted to thank the angel of the house, Pastor Mike, for giving us this platform to bless the people of God this day. I want to honor my brother in the Lord, Prophet Sylvester, a man on fire for God. And also, Prophet Marcus Rivers. Many of you may know him from Paris to almost 50,000 followers. He's known for worship. Amen. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Prophet Ugo. God has raised me up to deliver his children. And I believe that as you set foot in this place this day, he will not pass you by. In the name of Jesus. Is that prayer that I'll prophet Sylvester prayed is very prophetic because when I woke up in the morning for those of you that have me on Facebook you see that I posted it when I woke up yesterday morning I was very distressed but the spirit of the Lord spoke to me in a song and he said don't cry because I've done it and as soon as I walked outside to enter my car I saw a dead bird right in front for those of you that don't know one of the things that the enemy uses to monitor his children, the children of God, are animals. I remember praying, I believe a week or two ago, against monitoring spirits, and I prophesied. And I said, some of you are going to begin to see these animals laying around. And a woman emailed me and she said, for some reason, an owl dropped dead right next to her house. How many of you have seen an owl? Rarely. Look, five people. Yeah. yeah, for one, I mean a person, for one to fall down, it was monitoring her. But I believe that as we pray those prayers this day, every eye that has been set upon me is blinded. Yeah. Every monitoring system, oh demonic intelligence that has been assigned to you, Today, they'll lose your track. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The theme of this program is My Story Must Change. So, over the fall, so I'll be laying the foundation of what God is going to be doing this week through the breaking of curses. I'm going to be doing a teaching on curses. I am a teaching prophet. So for those of you that brought your notebook and your pen, you won't be disappointed. Amen. For those of you that did it, anytime you enter into the house of the Lord, make sure you have something to write with, even if it's your phone. Because you don't know when the Holy Spirit will drop something that can change your life. You want to document it. We get a little curses. What is a curse? A curse is an empowerment to fail. There are many types, there are many systems. I'll start by telling you a story. A uh, lady who's been blessed by a lot of my videos, she emailed me telling me her life story. 
She hails from, I believe, Zimbabwe or such, I'm not too sure. She began to tell me that her life story, how for some reason every man, it's okay with the keyboard, for some reason every man that her mother married would go broke. He would lose his money and he would leave her about three times. And she began to look at the lives of all her sisters. The same thing was happening to them. It's okay. The same thing was happening to them until she got married one time and then divorce. She got married again to the man she's with right now. She said for some reason the man would wake up he woke up and he said, man, I don't want to be here anymore. Because the moment they got together in the same house, the job he had, he lost it. People who were doing very well financially, she had a business, he was a doctor, lost it. They began to struggle, highly educated. He woke up and said, I want to go back to Jamaica. So she began to pray. Amen. Prayer is the key. For those of you that don't pray, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. Right. She began to pray. She went on a fast. I'll tell you what happened. As she was praying in the night, she said that as she was laying on the bed with her husband next to her, she said that she went into an out-of-body experience where her body was, her spiritual body was lifted out of her body. And she saw her husband laying next to her. And then all she knew, she looked at the door and she saw a woman walking inside. And the woman came in with two handmaids. And she asked the woman, who are you? And the woman said, I'm the queen of the Caribbean. And the woman asked her, who are you? What have you been doing to keep this man? Because I've been trying to have him come back to Jamaica. Because he schooled in Jamaica before he went back to Africa. She said, I've been, he said, I've been trying my best to have this man come back. She said, you know, I've made him leave all his other girlfriends. What makes you think that you're going to be the one that he'll stay for? And after contending, she contended. She said, that is not your husband. He belongs to me. And so her handmaids went to grab the man from the bed. He was sleeping. He didn't know what was happening. They went, she went, they went to grab the man, and she too, she went. She grabbed him. And after a while, the lady screamed, and they walked off. She said that it was getting so bad that she had a dream that one of the women came and put a scent in her mouth. And when she woke up, every time she would speak, there was an odor that would come out. And her husband, it was so noticeable that her husband, even her children, didn't want to be around her. I've dealt with that before several times. People have come and they said, I don't know what it is. I shower, I use deodorant. But for some reason, every time I enter this job, every time I'm walking around, people begin to perceive things. It's a spiritual stench. And said it got so bad to the point that her husband, when they were sleeping, he used to pass gas. And she said it was so bad that she couldn't even sleep. The, the, the order, maybe funny, but the order was, and she said these were the little tricks that they were doing in order to have them break up so he can go back to Jamaica. Wow. Spirit life. But from the moment she prayed, she said she began to, everywhere they went, she began to see women begin to die in a dream. They'll be walking together and they'll see, she'll see people leaving their car. Women leaving their car. Some of babies begin to die. Something that was following him. Something that was following him. I say that to tell you this. This world that we live in is a spiritual world. If you think that all there is is what you see, then you're blind. There are things in the spirit. The Bible said that the servant of Elisha cried out when the Samarians came to carry the master. He cried out. And he said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. 
that they be more for us than against us. And as he prayed that prayer, the eyes of the boy opened and he saw angels with chariots of fire. I pray for you this day. Amen. That the angelic army would stand behind you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That every force that stands against you, they will be met by resistance. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let me not preach. I'm here to teach. Amen. <laughs> deal with curses. There are six main curses that I'm going to deal with today, with the time permits. We have the self-imposed curse. Number one, the self-imposed curse. Number two, we have the curse of the bastard, when someone is born out of wedlock. We have the curse of the vagabond that comes through the shedding of innocent blood. We have the curse of the firstborn. And then we have generational patterns in the bloodline. The number six, we have projected curses, which falls under witchcraft. Amen. We're dealing with number one, self-imposed curse. If you can turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 12, beginning to read from verse 1. 2 Samuel 12 and 1. I'll read it from here. I have it open. And it says, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him. And he said unto him, There were two men in one city, one rich and one poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him. And with his children, he did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come unto him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said unto Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that have done this shall surely die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said unto David, Thou art the man. Thou art the man. We're dealing with self-imposed curses. When you're dealing with this curse, these things often come as a result of what you've spoken. I'm going to show you. David, in his anger, spoke, and he said, this man shall restore the lamb that he stole fourfold. As a result of this, four of David's own sons died. He didn't know that when he spoke in a wrath, he set something into motion. And if he had not repented, he would have died himself. Personally, I believe because he spared the life of Saul, that's the reason he lived. Four of his sons, I'll name them. The first child that Bathsheba bore, he died. Amnon was killed by Absalom for raping his sister Tamar. Absalom was put to death by Joab. And Adonijah was killed by Solomon. He did not know that when he spoke, he was speaking against himself. My God. And a lot of believers say things recklessly. That's why I look at some people and I say, you talk too much. Because you think that it may be a joke. You think that it may be funny. You think that you're just saying it, but you don't know that there are forces listening to you. Angels are listening. The Bible said these angels that hearken unto the voice of the word of God. Demons are listening to see whether you'll say anything contrary to faith. And when you begin to speak things, 
Because you have a mouth. I have a mouth, so I just want to talk. You begin to say things. You don't know how it's harming you. And there's some parents, you look at your children, and you don't like where they are. Have you asked yourself, what did I speak into them when they were children? Because David, he did not know that this decree he passed would fall upon the lives of his children. And the same way he killed those four children is the same way a lot of parents are killing their own children. Because of what they said. Yes, sir. I always admire the American culture and the Asian culture. Because when they see a child begin to do things, they'll put them in a system that will teach him. But a lot of us, as soon as we see our kid begin to take a remote, he remove the battery, he take the toy, open it, we begin to crush him. Do you know how much this thing cost? Why are you opening it? You're just like your father. Oh, everything you put your hands to do, you break it. And we don't know that because we speak such things into their life, it manifests in the future. Instead of saying, oh, my son, you like to open things. My daughter, you like to open things. You may be an engineer in the future. God may call you to set things in order. Perspective. Perspective. Amen. David did not know why. The Bible says what? Verse 5. David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. Not knowing that he was that very man. The Bible says the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Just because you have emotions doesn't mean you have to express them. Just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean you have to say what you're feeling. Because the devil looks at our feeling and he uses us to bring things into manifestation. Let me tell you this. Sometimes people can re receive a word from the enemy. I had a lady who I'm going to be mentoring. She called me. I called her. She began to tell me a story. She said there was one time that she received a prophetic word. And it seemed as if the prophet who was speaking, he was so afraid. He said, you know, I think this is going to happen to you. I don't know if anyone's going to be able to help you. And he began to speak like that. Wow. And she was so afraid. And she said from that day, all types of things began to happen in her life. She began to feel things move in her body. She began to get sick. She began to feel something moving in her. Why? Because that fear opened the door. For the enemy to manifest. So the devil likes to use emotions to bring people under captivity. And that's why the Bible says that self-control is a fruit of the spirit. Listen to me. A lot of us are seeking spiritual power to kill all these demons. But if you would exercise self-control, you wouldn't be in half of the problems that you're in now. We look at the fruits of the Spirit as just something, you know, it's just there in Galatians. We don't know that when you operate in the fruit of the Spirit, that's one of your greatest defenses. Self-control. The ability to look at someone who's spoken to you some way and not say what you want to say, but say the Lord bless you. Because the battle belongs to God. The ability to not do what you feel like doing when you're dead to yourself. The Bible says, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives inside of me. We have to get to that place in our life where we are no longer led off of impulses. We don't do what we want to do right then and there. We bring our flesh under subjection. We bring it under subjection. Amen. Amen. Bring it under subjection. Paul said, I pummel my body. Yeah. Lest by any means I will lose that inheritance, that reward, that belong. Emotions. Saying whatever you want to say, however you want to say it. Doing whatever you want to do. Going wherever you want to go. Not knowing that you're bringing yourself under captivity. The moment you feel something, you begin to self-diagnose yourself. You feel a little pain, you go to Google. What does it mean if my leg hurts? 
and Google would say you have cancer, and then you begin to call the doctor. <laughs> we diagnose instead of standing upon the word of God. The Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one drop of his word shall be removed. When you stand upon that word, it doesn't matter what you're going through, because the word keeps you firm. Bible says faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It said, do not look upon those things that are seen, but look upon the things that are unseen, because those things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are unseen are eternal. When you look at life, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you feel in your body. It doesn't matter how other people treat you. What matters is what's written in the word of God. Yes. When you stand upon that word, you can't be shaken. You can't be moved. Yes. So many of us are unstable because we live life upon what other people have said about us. We live life upon what we feel. We live life by what's in our account. A man of God once said, they asked him his net worth. And he said, it's so and so ma, and he laughed. And he said, my net worth is to call down whatever I need whenever I need it. Because I am not limited to physical resources. I am not limited to what's around me. The Bible says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And a lot of us bring ourselves under captivity. Because we lack faith. Wow. We don't we don't stand upon God's word. Because we we lack mercy. The Bible says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. It gets to a point that some of us will become deacons and pastors and prophets and we forget about where we came from. You forget that you too, you used to be in those streets. You forget that you too, you used to be promiscuous. You used to do all those sins that you're now judging other people for doing. And you begin to speak into their life, not knowing that when you don't show them mercy for their mistakes, the Lord will not show you mercy either. That's why no matter what people go through, I don't speak about them. No matter what the social media says or the internet says, I keep my mouth quiet. Because this is a law. Everything you sow returns back to you. And you lack mercy. Mercy will be withheld. Mercy. David, in a state of rage and anger, he lacked mercy. He lacked mercy. And he passed a judgment upon himself. The Bible says, if any man think he stand, let him take heed lest he fall. Sometimes we become so comfortable, we think we're on top of the mountain. We can, we can treat anybody anyhow. You know, when the Israelites had left captivity, God spoke to them. And he said, do not treat a stranger anyhow remembering that you were once strangers in the land of Egypt. You have to be careful the way you treat people. Some of you, you'll be on the phone for three hours talking, gossiping, nonsense about other people. For what? What reason do you have? What reason? The Bible says, who are you to judge another man's servant? Who are you? Self-imposed curse, unknowingly. I often say that words are like a snowball. You take it, you roll it down a mountain. By the time it gets to the bottom, it's an avalanche. And you won't know where exactly it began. And a lot of us go through life. We're now at a stage that we're looking around and we're saying, how did we get there? Not knowing it began at one word that we spoke. One phrase that we spoke in our moment of fear, anger, rage. We spoke it. We set it into manifestation. When I can't, I can't, I can't is in your dictionary, in your vocabulary. That's all you'll be able to do, nothing. Because that's all you've been declaring. You can't, you can't, you can't. Amen. I am a this, I am a that. You begin, these little, little phrases that we say, we don't know the, 
the severity of them. Because especially as a child of God, especially as a child of God, if the enemy can't stop you from going to heaven, he's going to try to make your life as difficult as it can be. And you'll begin to look upon the words you say and say, what can I use from that phone call? What can I use? What can I use from that conversation, that thing that's, that they said, to stand against them? Amen. Self-imposed curse. If you're someone who, who's always looking for people to pity you, as a deliverance minister, I come across a lot of people. A lot of them, I have mercy on them, but a lot of people, they just want pity. You know, and they'll come, and it's like, okay, I want to minister to you, but they'll spend more time telling me about their problem than allowing me to pray for them. 80% of the call or the session will be, I can't do this, this is what's been happening, and I'm trying to give them advice, and they're cutting me off to tell me more about their problem. Why? Because they just want to be pitied. And if there's someone who loves to be pitied, then you'll never progress. That's right. Never progress. Because you'll remain at that state. That's good teaching. At that state. Now, listen to me. You can get to a place in God where you live on heavenly realities. Where you become untouchable to the enemy. There's certain things I don't even worry about now. There's certain things I don't even pray. You know, there's certain things. That people will message me and they'll call me and they'll tell me all these things. And I say, it's too easy for God to do. Uh, because you're living at a place where you're unaccessible to the enemy. The Bible said he's taken you up and seated you in heavenly places next to Christ Jesus. Become untouchable. Remember, we were praying against hexes and doodles and witchcraft. And a lady, you know, and she said, she told me the vision she had while we were praying. She said that I saw two witches that came to hinder you. And she said they stood in front of you and they were blowing their breath. But as they were blowing, there was a fire around you. And as they continued to blow, that fire continued to grow. I was just praying. I didn't see anything. If the Lord were to open your eyes to show you the things that he protects you from, some of you wouldn't sleep. Some of you, you don't sleep now because he's just showing you a little bit. You stay all night, do all nights, seven days a week. If he show you just a little, if he were to show you everything that he was protecting you from, you will be surprised. Yeah. But I live in a place of confidence. Yeah. Bible says, touch not the Lord's anointed right. and do his prophet no harm. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So you have to be careful what you speak, yeah. what you speak into the lives of those around you, family, friends. I remember a man of God came to my church to minister. He was telling us about how him and his wife were. I don't know what he did. But he said that she was at a place where she was extremely disrespectful. To the point that she took even a slipper. And she would be slapping him in his face with a slipper. And you know, for it to get that bad, you know, things would have happened. Have already happened. He said if he wasn't a preacher, because he used to be a boxer. But she, she's lucky <laughs> that he got saved. But, you know, he said, regardless of all that she did to him, every morning he'll wake up, he'll sweet talk her. Hey, baby. Hey, honey. He'll tell her that he loves her. He'll speak positivity. Even to the point that her children will come and, she, and they'll say, Mom, why don't you show affection to Dad? Until it got to one day that she just got into, into in his presence and she knelt down and she said, Forgive me for all that I've done to you. The power of your mouth. The power of the things you speak into the lives of those that are around you. Yes. Especially when you're someone who's, when you're saved, you begin to use your words with wisdom. The Bible says we'll be judged by every idle word yes. that proceeds from our mouth. You gotta be careful. Amen? Amen. 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 That's the curse of the self-imposed curse. Then we're dealing with the second curse, the curse of the bastard. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 2 and it says a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord 
I want to tell you these things because as I teach, I want you to look at your life and see where it applies. Because a lot of times, Paul said, I do not fight as one who beats the air. A lot of us, we pray, we yell, we clap, we shout, we do all night, but it's like we're beating the air because we don't even know the source of our problem. Don't even know the source, beating the air. So as I go through, look at your life, examine yourself, your family, where you come from, see where you fit, and the Lord will deliver you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Bible said the pastor, where's the pastor? Someone that was born outside of wedlock. That includes those that, when you, if your mother was pregnant during the wedding. Amen. They try to cover it up. They got married. If you were conceived outside of marriage, you're considered a bastard. And any child that is born outside of wedlock is born outside of the covering of God. Because when you're dealing with sex, it's a spiritual transference. We often look at it as just something that is, is, is physical. And that's why, you know, I have a burden in my heart to talk about such things because I believe that the church should be the primary source of education on sex. Especially in this nation. Where we have 15-year-olds getting pregnant, 14. Different types of abominations happening. Why? Because the church is leaving that education to those in the school, to social media, to television, and we don't want to talk about it because when we think, when we say the word, you know, it's a taboo. It's not. It's, it's something real. And when a child is conceived outside of marriage, you're conceived outside of the covering of the Lord. And when there's a transference from the mother and the father into the into the seat or into the child themselves, it opens the door for the enemy to also come in. And that's why you see a lot of children living lives waywardly, rebellious, especially in this nation, where there's a lack of fatherly figures. You see violence and murders and all of that. Why? Because they're being affected by this curse. Wow. So if you look at your life and you were born outside of wedlock and you've been struggling with a few things, you have to address it in prayer tonight. Jesus. Wedlock is protective. The marriage bed is undefiled. It's undefiled. It's undefiled. So when you begin to sleep around, outside of marriage you just you know i was reading an article the man of a man of god had written he said when you sleep out around outside of marriage whatever you do in the bed you're worshiping the enemy with it any position anything you do in the bed it's a it's a, it's a worship to the enemy worship to the enemy demons transferred through it and you wonder why your child behaves the way they, they behave. You wonder why your life has been the way it is. But I pray the Lord will set you free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So what? A pastor never enter into the congregation of the Lord. Such people, they never feel peace. They never feel welcome in the house of God. And that's one of the causes for, you know, effeminate men, masculine women, lasciviousness, homosexuality. You see in this nation, it's no surprise that when people stop caring about marriage in this nation, you begin to see all types of perversion begin to reign. When there was a high moral standard and it was normal for people to get married before intercourse, the things you see today, you don't see them. You see them because of this. It's real. But the Lord will deliver you. In the name of Jesus. We're going to move on to the third one. Curse of the vagabond. That comes through the shedding of innocent blood. The shedding of innocent blood. Genesis 4. From verses 10 to 12. We deal with the story of Cain. The first murderer. And the curse that God placed upon him. Because of his action. Bible says, and he said, what hast thou done? 
the voice of thy brother's blood cry unto me from the ground. And now thou art thou cursed from the earth which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto her, unto thee her strength. And a fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. Dealing with the shedding of innocent blood, this also includes abortion. Because when you're dealing with abortion, you're dealing with uh, the shedding of innocent blood. And not just you committing the abortion, but you advising someone to do it as well. I believe there was a man of God named Derek Prince. I'm sure some of you may know him. One of the trailblazers in deliverance in this nation. He was conducting deliverance on a young lady. And they began, he began to pray for her. And she threw up something that was the size of a quarter, but it resembled an embryo or fetus. Like a miniature baby. She threw it up. It was red. And that was the physical manifestation of the spirit of abortion. Then they asked her, have you ever committed abortion? She said, no, I've never committed. And she said, but there was one time my neighbor wanted to commit and she came to me to ask. And I said that she should probably go do it. And from that moment, that spirit entered into her as well. When there is a, when the shedding of innocent blood is released, you know, it's, it's sacrifice unto demons. It's sacrifice unto the enemy. Murder, homicide, abortion, or participation in any of these. Then we have human and blood sacrifices. A lot of us are struggling with the things that our ancestors have done before us. When you're coming from a country, a continent like Africa, rooted in witchcraft and blood magic, where if you go in the winter, you can't be safe around Christmas. They tell all their children to stay in the house around why? Because there are various cases, people finding their bodies on the road, and they'll cut off the breast, or they'll cut off the head. Why? To use it for money ritual. And they don't know that that blood of that person that they've shed, they've done it unto an idol. And it's speaking not only against them, but it's speaking against the land as well. The curse of the vagabond. A man of God was speaking, and I was reading a book actually, and he began to speak about Bolivia, the country that he was, and the state of uh, spiritual death that was around the place. If you came to find out that um, they had a, a silver rush, where they found silver in the mine, so men began to go and dig it for about 450 years, and in the middle of that, over 12 million people died. Because of what? Searching for silver. Digging it out. Even importing slaves in order to dig out that silver. And what was the result? He said that Christianity had not grown in that region for over 100 years. That people were living life in poverty and impoverished. There was even division among the churches. Why? Because all of those lives that had been lost were an altar unto the queen of heaven. An altar unto the enemy. Why do you think? Why do you think that Hitler, instead of just having the Jews killed, he would have them transported to a specific place in order to murder them? He was setting up demonic altars in certain regions, demonic altars in certain countries, in certain, because he could have just killed them right then and there in the house. But he said, no, I want to transport them. Why? The Bible, not the Bible, but the saying goes that he would feel happy when he heard the screams and their shouts. Why? He wanted to recreate what he saw in hell. Jesus. The torment that goes on in hell. He wanted to recreate it on earth. That's why he would gather people and put them in those camps. And some of them, it would take them four, five, six, seven days to die. For what purpose? For what purpose? And the spiritual state of that entire continent was messed up. 
This is the severity. Sin of innocent blood. So you look at your life and you say, you know, some of us, we don't know what our parents have done. We don't know what our great, great, great grandparents have done. A lot of times these things are still crying out. The blood of the innocent is still crying against us. But the Lord will set you free this night. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Then we're dealing with. I want to deal with generational patterns. I want to show you how. There's a phrase that goes like father, like son, like mother, like daughter. A lot of us are reliving the lives of those that came before us. There's a popular saying that says, no matter how much you try not to be like your father, you always end up like it. And a lot of us, the life that they live, going through the same things that they went through, experiencing the same things that they experienced, it's a pattern in the bloodline. That's why you go to some homes and you see that no woman over a certain age, all the women should be married, but they're all single. You go to a certain place and some of them die at a certain age. You go to a certain family and you see that all of them, they acquire wealth. And as, as soon as they reach a certain age, they lose it all. This is a pattern. Yeah. And I want to show you in the scripture. Using three men, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We won't read all the scriptures, but I want you to write it down and go search it on your own. Abraham, number one, he lied. Bible says that he was traveling through Egypt and he lied that Sarah was his sister and not his wife. Isaac, the exact same lie. Abraham lied in what? Genesis 22. Write it down. Genesis chapter 20, verse 2. Isaac, the exact same lie that Rebecca wasn't his wife. Genesis 26 and 9. And then Jacob was seen as what? He was known as what? A liar and a supplanter. Three generations, wow. something happened. I know. Abraham, he had a wife who was barren. Sarah, Genesis 11 and 30. Isaac, Rebecca, his wife, also barren. Genesis 25 and 21. Jacob, his wife, Rachel, also barren. Genesis 30 and one. Not only were the wives barren, but they all looked the same. Bible says they were all fair and very beautiful. Fair and very beautiful. I want to show you that to tell you how it works in the family. Because there are certain things you may be doing and you wonder why do I do these things, but you don't know your father did the same thing. Your grandfather did the same thing. Your mother did the same thing. And what I've noticed at times uh, that it's always the plan of the enemy to bring about a desired result. But the way you get to that result may be different. There's some families that all the men go to jail. But a man, one of them may be stealing, one of them may be killing, one of them may be robbing, but they all what? End up in jail. A pattern in the bloodline. You see how Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were all attracted to the same type of woman. And there are a lot of men and women here that you see yourself being attracted to a specific type of person. And you say, why is it that out of all the men in the house of God, why is it that out of all the women in the house of God, I always see myself wanting to be with someone else outside? My father, he beat my mother. My father, he took advantage of my mother. But for some reason, you're attracted to the same type of man because the enemy wants to keep that bondage in the family. He wants to what? He wants to keep that bondage, that cycle, Going over and over and over again. It's over. Spouses, business partners, friends. You see yourself surrounded by a specific time and you don't even know why. You know, you're just attracted to them. Oh, they're just attracted to you. How many of you have had a specific type of person attracted to you? Especially as a young man or as a, or as a young woman. You have to pray that God will cover you. 
have to pray. Because you should not be attracting the same people in Christ that you were attracting when you were in the world. I have to pray, God, cover me. I don't know what it is they see in me, but I don't want them to see me. I don't want them to see it. Amen. Then we see the case of Moses. We often talk about the anger of Moses, but do you know it was generational? We see Moses was a Levite, and that's shown in Exodus 2, 1 to 10. He was a Levite. But then we have a case in Genesis 34, verse 25, where the Bible says that Simon and Levi slaughtered all the men of Shechem because they had lain with their sister. They lain with their sister. And that anger was called, was cursed by Jacob. Let's go there. Genesis chapter 49, from verses 5. And it says what? Simon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitation. My soul come not down into their secrets, unto their assembly. Mine honor be not thou united. For in their anger they slew a man. And in their self will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Moses, the thing that stopped them from entering into the promised land was his anger. But he didn't know that it did not begin with him. It began with people that came far before him. Levi. And the enemy wants to take us to a place where he'll stop us from reaching the position of our manifestation. Where he'll stop us from encountering the glory of God. Where he'll stop us from entering into the land of milk and honey in which God has ordained for us to be. And you'll begin to ask yourself, I heard the voice of the Lord, and he said, some of you begin to ask yourself, why is it that every time I do good, I see myself making this same mistake? You'll say, why is it that every time I'm moving forward, I see myself doing the same thing, even though I know better, even though I know I shouldn't, but it's as if there's something in me that makes me prone to making this type of decision. I'm here to tell you that it may have not originated with you. It may be in the blood. Maybe in the blood. His anger stopped him. God said, speak to the rock, but he didn't speak. He smote it. And although water came out, he said, because of this thing you've done, you will not see that promised land. Their anger. His anger. He didn't know that it wasn't him. He didn't know that it was inherited. He didn't know that it was passed on. But I pray for each and every one of you this day that whatever has been lying in your blood that it would be eradicated by the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, it doesn't matter what they did before you. It doesn't matter the mistakes that they made before you. The Bible says, he that is in Christ Jesus is a new creature. I declare that you've been made new. I said you've been made new. All things have passed away. In the name of Jesus, those mistakes your mother made, you will not make them. The mistakes your father made, you will not make it. That path that they fell in, you shall not fall. You will stand and declare the word of the Lord. You will stand and reach into your promised land. You shall manifest in the name of Jesus. You will not be hindered. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me see it. Then we have the curse of incest. This one is very important. 
Deuteronomy 23. Deuteronomy 23 and verse 3. It says what? And it says, An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord. I'm going to tell you the history. Amabites and Moabites were the offspring of Lot and his very own daughters. You'll know that when they fled from Sodom and Gomorrah, the angel said, do not look back. But the wife of Lot looked back and the word of God says she was turned into a pillar of salt. So when they fled, they went into a mountain and the two daughters conspired among themselves and they said, let us, let us entice our father, sleep with him, so that his generation shall not come to an end. So they got drunk and they slept with him. And one of their offsprings was Moab. The other was Ammon. The Bible says, an Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Why is this important? Because then we have the case of Judah and Tamar. In the case of, in the book of Genesis 38, 14 and 16. Judah and his very own daughter-in-law, Tamar. He slept with her. Unknowingly. He thought she was a harlot, and he went in unto her. And the seed that was produced was cursed with that same curse that God cursed the Ammonites and the Moabites. Why is this important? Because the Bible says, unto the tenth generation. This is the reason why the children of Israel were not supposed to have a king until David came. Because what? The Bible says, when Jacob was blessing his sons, he blessed Judah. And he said, the scepter shall never depart from Judah. So Judah was the one, his lineage was the one that was supposed to produce the kings of Israel. But he could not produce those kings because he had been cursed unto ten generations. So God had to wait ten generations until David was given birth to him. That's why Saul was always ordained or destined to fail because he was an illegitimate king. First of all, he came from the Benjamites, not from Judah. Now we see what? Ten generations. We're going to count to ten generations until David. You ready? We have what? Perez. That's number one. Perez bore Hezron. Two. Hezron bore Ram. Ram bore Amenadab. Amenadab bore Nashon. Nashon bore Salmon. Salmon bore Boaz. Boaz bore Obed. Obed bore Jesse. And Jesse bore David. Ten generations. Wow. My God. God had to wait ten generations until that curse was lifted. Before he was, before he reinstituted the blessing of Jacob upon Judah, and there are some people you don't even know the type of blessing that God has ordained for your family to walk in. Wow. We often talk about generational curse, but there's also generational blessing. Yes. Judah was ordained to produce the king, but because of that action, they had to wait ten generations. And there are some people that are struggling right now. You may be poor, but you don't know that God has ordained for you to be extremely wealthy. And you're struggling not knowing that it's a curse and manifestation. There are all types of blessings and increases that God has ordained for you to walk in. But you don't walk in any. Why? Because of that thing. As a hindered Judah, it's been hindering you. But I pray for you this very day. 
that in the name of Jesus Christ, every curse that has been operational in your life, it shall be broken. Amen. You will not suffer the consequences of the mistakes of your forefathers. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Then we have the curse of the firstborn, where it seems as if, how many of you are firstborn here? It seems as if the enemy always comes the hardest after the firstborn. I'm a firstborn myself, so I know. We'll see in the case of Ishmael, the firstborn of Abraham, how he lost what was supposed to be his. In Genesis 21.10, then we see Esau, the son of Isaac, who lost his own inheritance. Firstborn, Genesis 25. Then we see Reuben, the son of Jacob, who, who Jacob cursed him and said, Unstable as water there thou shalt be. Then we see Manasseh, the son of Joseph, when, when Isaac was blessing them, he put his right hand on his brother Ephraim. And Ephraim and, and Joseph said, No, this is the this is the youngest. And he said, I know what I'm doing. Don't worry about it. Lost in the first part. But then we see in Deuteronomy 33, verse 6. That Moses pronouncing a blessing upon Reuben. He said, let Reuben live and not die. And let not his men be few. I pray for each and every one of you this day. Uh, that as Moses prophesied uh, unto Reuben. Uh, although he was cursed. Uh, and he said, let Reuben live. Uh, that you shall live. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, he said, let Reuben not die. You will not die. You will not be defeated. He said, let his men not be few. You shall not be few. In the name of Jesus. Ask Ita. Vasule itore is kotalaba. The Bible says, uh, Who is it that speaks and it comes to pass? Uh, when the Lord commanded it not, uh, I don't care what has been spoken uh, in the generations before you. Uh, I stand upon the altar of God uh, and I cancel it this day. Uh, any word contrary to the will of God in your life, uh, I said it's cancelled. Uh, I said it's cancelled. Uh, I said it's cancelled. Uh, in the name of Jesus. I speak to you uh, as Moses spoke to Reuben, uh, and I say that you will not die. Uh, your men shall not be few. Uh, it doesn't matter what you've seen so far. Uh, it doesn't matter what you've been going through. Uh, it doesn't matter what the enemy has been reminding you of. Uh, I stand upon the word of God uh, that never changes, uh, and I say you have been made free. Uh, Say I'm free. I said those chains that held your mother they shall not hold you those chains that held your father they shall not hold you those bondages that are visible in your family tonight they've been broken I said they've been broken I said they've been broken And he cut off the heads of the prophet of God. I stand this day as the prophet of the Almighty God. Any voice speaking against your life today, the silence. I said they shall be silent. I say they shall be silent in the name of Jesus. 
I see shackles being broken. The Lord is setting you free. I said he's setting you free. I said he's setting you free. I don't know which parent this is for, but the Lord said that you've been seeing, you've been seeing the same thing in your child that you used to do. And you said, but I've been saved. Why are they doing these things? Uh, but as you stand here in their place, uh, I say, they shall be free. Amen. Every person that came out of your womb, uh, that came from your loins, uh, the blood of your blood, uh, the flesh of your flesh, uh, they shall be free. Amen. I don't know who you are. You look at your spouse uh, and you say, I don't know why this man treats me this way. Uh, I don't know why he doesn't come to church. Uh, I don't know why he's not serious with God. Uh, it may be in his blood, uh, but today upon the altar of God, uh, we pull him out uh, from that darkness. You look at your wife yes. and you say, why isn't she serious yes. the way she's supposed to? But I stand upon the altar yes. of the living God. Yes. The Bible says, behold, I hold the keys of David. Yes. I shut up and no man openeth. Yes. And I open up and no man shut up. Yes. We use those keys of David yes. and we sever them. Yes. From the past life, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. Make some noise unto the Lord. Make some noise unto the Lord. We're going to break some curses tonight. Amen. I want you to raise up your right hand. And I want you to repeat after me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I take responsibility. I take responsibility for the actions of my forefathers. For the actions of my forefathers. I take responsibility. I take responsibility for the sins of those before me. For the sin of those before me. I lay those responsibilities. I lay those responsibilities upon the Christ of upon the cross of Calvary. 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 I lay those burdens. I lay those burdens. Upon Jesus. Upon Jesus. Upon Jesus. Upon Jesus. Every curse. Every curse. I declare you broken. I declare you in the name of Jesus. Yes. I declare you broken. I declare you broken. Let's make 
Jesus, oh Shatana. Mm. Say the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every sickness, every sickness. manifesting in my life manifesting is a result of a curse. As a result of a curse. Get out of my body. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, so dole ekoto, rapade ekoto, 
Walk and hide from the Lord. Walk and hide from my God. Every demon is hiding in your body. I curse it right now. In the name of Jesus. Rota Patole, bring it to the front. Zite Ita Pali Idone Ita. Oh, so tokopo, raise up your hand. Any power, any power that has been hiding, that has been hiding, that has been hiding, that has been hiding, manifest, manifest, and go, and go, and go, and go, right now. Wherever it is, yes, Lord. Wherever it is, come out, come out now, 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 out now, out now, out now, out now, out 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 Yes, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, the power of the Lord shall come. Amen. Amen. He said, I am he that has eyes like of a flaming fire. Amen. What can be hidden from the Lord? Yes. He said, even if I make my bed in heaven, yes. you are there. Yes. I declare this moment. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
Yes, Lord. Lord said, anoint this woman's hand. Jesus. Mm. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Lord. My Father. Have your way, Lord. The work of your hand is blessed. Have yes, Lord. Way. Blessings even to your offspring. Yes. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessings. Even Give to your children. Amen. 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 Even unto your household. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord said, That which the enemy has stolen, Jesus, I shall restore it sevenfold. Amen. Amen. I shall restore it sevenfold. Amen. Amen. I shall restore it sevenfold. Amen. I shall restore it sevenfold. Amen. 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 I shall restore it sevenfold. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Zechariah 5 and 1. I want you to pray right now. Everything you've lost as a result of cycles and bondage, my father, I say this day it shall be restored. Amen. Every gifting that you've lost, Jesus. Every financial increase that you've lost. Amen. Amen. Every blessing that you've lost, Amen. Jesus, whatever has been stolen, yes, Lord, it's restored. Amen. Amen. It's restored. Amen. Amen. It's restored. Amen. Amen. It's restored. Amen. 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 This moment, yes, in the name of Jesus, yes, yes Lord. Lord. Yes, sir. Let's worship the Lord, Jesus. Just worship the Lord wherever you are. Just worship the Lord wherever you are. Just worship, worship, worship. Just worship, worship me, says the Lord. Just forget about what's on your mind. Forget about what you're going through. Forget about what you want to say. Just worship the Lord. We exalt you. Just worship the Lord. We exalt you. Just worship the Lord. We worship you, Lord. You are so exalted. Ah. Holy, you are holy. You are holy. this day. Yes, Lord. If that is you, and you said, I'm tired of the way the enemy has held me in captivity. And you said, this day, my story must change. Amen. Meet me upon this altar. Right now.
the right hand of the Father, you are holy. Holy, you are holy. Lord God, I pray for your people this day. All eyes closed, hands lifted. I pray for your people this day. That as they stand here, their life begins afresh. In the name of Jesus, Amen. your life begins afresh. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. the word of the Lord says, by the reason of the oil, the yoke is broken. Amen. I said it's 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 broken. Nothing to ikosa. Yes, just receive it. Oska vale du ura isko duba. It's broken this day. A fresh start. Amen. Kashata da hata. Ushers, ushers, ready, follow me. Every generational cycle is broken. Be free! Be free! Be free! Right now. Be free! Be free! Kata tapa ada. Daria azuka paledini iskopa. Zidushka avatu salegete. Oshata nataka. In the name of Jesus, yes, the Torah ego, he shall be fruitful. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Right now, the pain from your soul. 
as a child. I call it out. I see the Lord straightening your path. Things have been difficult. But he's straightened your path this day. He's straightened your path this day. In the name of Jesus.
hands of this woman. The offering box is still open. If you have not given your offering, the Lord has called you. Can as let God the altar and drop your offering. He's placed a burden upon your heart to pray. He's placed a burden upon your heart to travail. I see him speaking to you even in the dark of night. Anything that has been hindering your spiritual vision, I say it's removed this day in the name of Jesus. Anything that has been blind in your eyes, it's removed. Sight.
let no man trouble me. Yes. We're going to pray this day that every demonic mark of this favor mm. would be washed away Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. Every mark of the wicked. Every mark of depression. Every mark of disfavor. Let it be washed away in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. to your life. Fire. And from this day forth, every reoccurring cycle is broken in the name of Jesus. Anything that has been following your footsteps, enforcing the desire of the wicked, I said today they die. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy into your life. Your story will change. Your story will change. Your story will change. In the name of Jesus, where you've been rejected, they'll call you back. Where you've been rejected, you shall be accepted in the name of Jesus. Asata kapa la padi ego pali idoska adora idama la antuska aka valapa ka eskotoa. Yes, shavata la baato. I declare this moment that what God has written about your life. It shall come to pass. I said it shall come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Every prophetic utterance. Prophetic decree. Every vision that God has given you. I said it shall be established. In the name of Jesus. Those that seek your life. You shall see them no more. You shall see them no more. You shall 
will see them no more. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Vatakapali idoska bali dunia alabasiko paaru udoska ba vadile iskopande ile. The glory of the Lord shall never depart from your life. The glory of God shall never depart from your house. In the name of Jesus. As Elijah called down fire, we call down fire this day. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Let it rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. The Lord said, as the three Hebrew boys walked in the fire, and nothing happened to them, because they, the fire they carried within uh, was greater than that which was without. Uh, let the fire of God uh, resonate in your life uh, this day. Oh, salve kadure iskotoshka dore edo. Wherever you go. God shall be there. Amen. You will not be a victim to your circumstance. Amen. Your surroundings shall be victims to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. the army of the Lord shall go before you and scatter your enemies. In the name of Jesus, the messengers of God shall go before you. In Jesus' name, David spoke and said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies of the armies of God? I speak against every uncircumcised Philistine, defying the God of your life. And I said, Let them fall from where they rose in the name of Jesus. We're going to thank the Lord wherever you are. Just thank the Lord for what he's done. Thank the Lord for what he's done. Thank the Lord for what he's done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Some of you are going to go sleep and you'll see some things in your dream. But it's already done. The Lord has done it. The Lord has done it. The Lord has delivered you up. In the name of Jesus. Tomorrow, come with your oil. The prophet of God is going to be praying over them. And the power of God is going to be in this place. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All the glory must be